I just want to start by saying welcome. Thanks for joining me for this vinyasa. Um, I want you to remember that I cannot see you, and so you need to practice your yoga safely. You need to follow ahimsa, which is non-harming or non-violence to the self. You don't have to do any of the poses I'm suggesting. If you want to sit back and just watch and listen, that's totally fair. Um, I am going to give a lot of variations to poses. Um, I need you to just be conscious of what your body can do this morning and allow that to be totally okay. So having said that, sorry, I can still hear some audio. Having said that, what I wanna start out with this morning is a mantra. Uh, we've not done this one before. The words are Om Ritam Nama. Om, we know Om is the Unit for all sound that can possibly be made. Ritam, R I T A M, it means truth. And then Nama in this mantra means uh, releasing the ego conscious so that we are in alignment with the universe. So, put all together, this mantra means that our intentions and desires are in alignment with and supported by the universe. And right now in this really bizarre time that we find ourselves in, we really want to be in alignment and we've been thrown out of balance in every capacity in our lives. And so we come to the mat to reclaim some of that. Um, and so guess what? Nobody can hear you. So if you have been too shy to chant in class before, this is your opportunity. And I'm gonna do it along with you um, since I can't hear you responding either and just kind of have fun with it. But remember, when we do go to set our intention, and you want that intention to be in alignment with the universe, it needs to be phrased positively. So while all this weird stuff is going on, you do not want to be saying things in your intention like, uh, please don't let's get sick, or you know, please let this end you know, now. Positive words, thank you for my healthy cells. Thank you for keeping my family healthy. Thank you for letting us, you know, find a life lesson here on the other side when we get to the light. So having said that, I want you to take a comfortable seated pose and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Cleansing exhale through the mouth. If you're new to yoga, you're breathing in and out through the nose unless I instruct you otherwise. Again, one more deep inhale and a loud exhale through the mouth. So let me say the mantra first to you. And then on the second one, you'll chime in with me and we'll chant it five times. Yeah. Om Ritam Nama. Now you join me. Om Ritam Nama Om Ritam Nama Om Ritam Nama and keeping your hands at your heart in prayer pose with your eyes closed, I want you to set out that positively worded intention to the universe. When you're ready, go ahead and release your hands. Inhale the arms all the way up. Exhale the hands back to the heart. We are inviting in balance. We are taking control. Release the arms, inhale them back up. Now interlace the fingers, turn the palms to the ceiling. And as you do so, if the shoulders rise up, I need you to take them down and back. See if the arms come slightly behind the ears. They might not, don't force it, no pain in yoga. Deep inhale. Exhale to the right. Deep inhale. 
Stay with the breath. On your next inhale, come back to center. Exhale to the left. Wait for the inhale, come back to center, and release the arms back down. Perfect. So let's come on to hands and knees in table pose. Remember, make any adjustments that you need to. I'm going to try to remember to offer as many variations as I can. And so from table, I want you to take a big inhale. Let the belly sink, heart and chin lift into cow pose. Exhale, round it out into cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. One more time. And as you come back to a neutral spine, go ahead and walk both hands forward into puppy. You can either bring the forehead to the mat or a little bit trickier if you want to, you can bring your chin down to the mat. And if the forehead doesn't touch, the floor is just too far away, it hasn't risen this morning to support you, can you grab like a pillow off your couch or your bed, something so that we are supported. Take a couple of deep breaths there. One more strong inhale, big exhale. Walk the hands back into table, tuck the toes. If you are new to yoga, you should not have to move the feet and the hands from here to get to down dog. Maybe a little adjusting, but this generally should be the correct spacing for you. So lift the hips up and back. The ears are between the upper arms. You're creating space between the shoulder blades. Fingers are spread wide. If you need to look forward for a moment, the creases in your wrist should be parallel to the front of the mat. Now walk it out a little bit here, bending one knee then the other so we can loosen up a little bit. And as we go through our sequence, we're going to be thinking about that mantra we just chanted, Om Ritam Nama. What is your intention for being here this morning? What do you need from your practice? What do you need from me? Go ahead and send both heels towards the earth. Big inhale. Exhale. Bring the knees back down into table. Push back into Balasana, child's pose. So knees go wide, feet together. Heart softens to the earth. If child's pose is tough on your knees, I have a couple of variations for you. You could take a blanket and put it behind the knees so that when you sit back, you're not going as far. If it's really tough on the knees, flip over into reverse child's pose. So Om Ritam Nama is really all about the law of attraction. What we put out there is what we receive. The universe wants us to have what we ask for. It's not, it's not isolating, it's not judging. And that's why we want to be careful with the words we use because when we do put negative words out there when we don't really mean them, those are the words the universe hears from us. And it wants us to have what we want. And so when we say um, something like, I wish I wasn't fat, well, the universe doesn't understand the negative that came before the word fat, it just hears fat. So we need to learn to rephrase things, especially in this time of, imb of imbalance. Take a deep breath where you are. Come back on up into table. You're going to take that left arm, inhale it all the way up to the ceiling. If your shoulder doesn't want to open up too far, it's okay. Don't force it. Your palm is facing in the same direction you're looking. And when you get to an exhale, 
we're threading that left arm underneath the right arm. We're bringing the left shoulder and ear all the way to the floor. Now, if that's too far away for you, again, don't force it. Grab a blanket off your bed or your couch, something that you can prop that shoulder on and that ear so you're not just hanging unsupported. All right, I'm gonna give you some variations here and thread the needle. This is option A. If you're hanging out right here and you're like, yeah, this is fine, I'm staying right here, you totally should. Option B, let's take that right arm and reach it way overhead. And then let the fingers on the right hand walk to the left so you're drawing that right arm a little bit behind the right ear. And again, if you have shoulder issues, or your shoulder is saying, yeah, I don't think that's happening today, you need to listen. That's a ahimsa. There's no judgment here. I can't see you. Life is all good. All right. So option A was right palm to the earth. Option B, right arm reaching forward. If you want option C, shift your weight into the left knee and straighten out that right leg with the toes tucked on the earth. So. Not unlike my situation here, I'm not used to my mat being on a carpet. We're gonna have some other balance issues and that's okay. If we tip over, we tip over. Deep breath in, cleansing exhale. All right, here's option D if you want it. See if you can lift that right leg until it's parallel to the earth. Keep breathing. There we go. And remember, if any of these variations do not make the bottom shoulder happy, don't do them. One more breath here. Do you fall? Slowly bring the right knee back down. Slide the right hand in. Push your way all the way up into cat pose. Inhale, cow. Hold cow, tuck the toes, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Shonasana. <clears throat> ah, deepening the breath, remember to create space between the shoulder blades. Strong inhale. Exhale, knees to the earth, coming back to table. As you untuck the toes, inhale the right arm up to the ceiling. Again, my palm is facing the same way I'm looking. Fingers are spread wide. Reach, big inhale. As you exhale, gently allow that right arm to come down, thread underneath the left. Again, right shoulder and right ear to the floor. Unless the floor is too far away, then we grab a blanket or a pillow. So, right where you landed is option A. Option B, stretch that left arm overhead. Let the fingers walk slightly to the right. You'll feel that top shoulder opening. It should feel like a good stretch, no pain. If you want option C, shift the weight into the right knee. Stretch that left leg out behind you with the toes tucked. You can close your eyes here if that doesn't throw off your balance. Deepen the breath. If you really want option D, go ahead and see if you can lift that left leg parallel to the earth. Deep inhale. Here we go. Exhale the left knee down if you chose to lift it. Slide the left hand back in. Push your way right into cat pose and hold it there. Good job. Inhale, cow, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Remember, doesn't matter in dog if your heels touch or not. If the tendons in the back of the ankles are tight, the heels aren't going to touch the floor and that is totally okay, don't force it. You can also bend the knees in downward facing dog if you want to. All right, big inhale. Exhale, round the spine as you come forward into plank. Let the head be the last part of the body to straighten out. 
As you come down in Chaturanga, elbows go straight back along the ribs, yeah? Come down as one unit. Untuck the toes, inhale, lift into cobra. Cobra can be down here, can be a baby cobra today. Listen to your back. Close your eyes, drop the shoulders. Deep inhale. Exhale, push back into Balasana, child's pose. Stay with the breath. The breath will always keep you in the present moment. The breath is always new. Ah, deep inhale. Cleansing exhale. And then rise back up into table when you're ready. Again, tuck the toes. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Round the spine as you come forward into plank. Chaturanga, if chaturanga is too hard, modify it by setting the knees down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, I'll meet you in downward facing dog. Three deep breaths here. And then release the knees back down into table. So I'm gonna take that left leg. I'm gonna get it to come forward. You can grab it if you need to, that's totally fair. We're gonna see if we can straighten that leg out in front of us. It doesn't have to straighten. Flex that left foot. And what you might notice here is that the right hip automatically pulled back to help you get that leg forward. I need you to shift that right hip forward. You should probably feel that. Inhale here. Exhale, stay here if this is enough stretch for you. If you need more out of that hamstring stretch, you can start to find your fold. I would take it slowly, come down a little bit. Inhale, lift up. Just working your way into that leg. If you find that your hamstrings are pretty well loosened, the farther you take the hands forward in front of you when you fold, the more you intensify the stretch. Now deepen the breath. Keep pulling that right hip forward. And then slowly, Walk the hands back in towards you. We're just making one little adjustment here. I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna grab onto that left foot, pick it up, and move it to the right so it's in front of my right knee. All right, this is gonna feel great. Deep inhale. Exhale, slowly find your fold. Probably aren't going as far on this one. And then inhale, make your way back up. I'm going to use my right hand to pick up that left foot again, move it back over. And then shift the hips forward so we can find a nice low lunge. I'm going to keep that back leg down. I'm softening the hips. I do want to lift the heart. You know, when we're so out of balance, we need some heart opening poses. Uh, we're probably going to need some throat chakra opening poses. Take a deep breath here. Now go ahead and tuck the toes on that back foot and lift the leg. Yeah? So I'm lifting the back thigh without locking the knee. Breathe. Deep inhale. As you exhale, plant the hand, step all the way back to plank. And here's your vinyasa, chaturanga. Into cobra. Downward facing dog. Deep inhale. Loud exhale. Take advantage of those cleansing exhales to let go of life's worry 
and stress right now, yeah? Go ahead, bring the knees back down into table. Ask that right foot to come through and forward for you. I'm on the heel of the right foot. I need to move the left hip forward. I will re-square everything. Very slowly, find your fold, wherever that might be for you. If it's a non-existent fold, it's perfect. Couple more deep breaths. And then as you make your way back up, go ahead and use the left hand to grab the right foot, pick it up, scooch the leg over. And while I go shut my window because of the neighbor's dogs, you come into your fold and breathe. My dogs wanted to be in here, but the two greyhounds, there wasn't any room for me on the mat, so they got booted. Deep inhale. Make your way back up. Use the right hand to grab that left foot. Bring it back to its original spot. And then let's bring the hips forward. Ah, and do a nice low lunge. Lift the heart. You might even lift the chin a little to open up the throat chakra. So let me explain why this is important. The heart and the throat opening. If only Tom Nama is all about letting go of your ego consciousness to be in alignment with the universe, part of that means that we have to be in alignment with our own truth. And frequently, I think, we don't really know what our intentions are. We don't know what we want. When we allow our heart to voice those intentions through the throat chakra, not always being controlled by the brain that wants to kick in, then we get closer to that truth. Hope that makes sense. Go ahead and tuck the back toes, lift that back leg. Remember, you're lifting the back of the thigh without locking the knee. Ah, deep breath in. When you're ready, plant the hands, step back to plank. Any of these vinyasas, you can skip if you need to. You know we're gonna end up in dog, right? Inhale here. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, Cobra, and we'll meet in Down Dog. Deep inhale, cleansing exhale, and then go ahead and walk the feet forward towards your hands, Uttanasana, forward fold. Take a moment to move around, relax into the pose. Go ahead and shake out the head and neck a little bit. Release tension. Imagine it melting off the shoulders, dripping down onto your mat or your floor, and then disappearing. Inhale, monkey, or the Uttanasana. So either the fingertips can stay on the earth if you can get the back flat, or typically they might come to the shins so we can flatten out the spine. Whichever one feels better for you is the one you should do. Inhale here. Exhale, back into forward fold. Reverse swan dive, come all the way up. If you don't have room where you are to get your arms up, take them forward. And then sit down in the chair. We've probably all been sitting in a lot of chairs recently. Oh, this one's gonna be more fun. All right, so I want you to look down you should see the tips of your toes. If you can't see them, you need to pull the hips back a little bit. Breathe. <sighs> Happy place. Om Ritam Nama. Ah, <sighs> perfect. Take your hands to your heart. Look down and see if you can lift your toes. And again, if you're on carpet, please exercise compassion. You might be a little wobbly. Set the toes back down. I know the thighs might be chatty right now. Can you lift the heels? Deepen the breath. Oh. 
set the heels back down, straighten the legs, take the arms all the way up, exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, monkey. Exhale, back down, step or jump back to plank. We inhale here. Exhale, chaturanga. Into cobra. Ah, when you're ready, I want you to melt the heart back down. Take the right side of the body into gecko, which means the left arm is a pillow for my head. Right arm comes out in scarecrow. Right knee comes out. This is a hip opener. And then go ahead and close your eyes. Letting the breath settle for a moment. <sighs> Letting go. Letting the tension in the hips release. Vinyasa doesn't have to be all work. There should be little treats along the way, don't you think? Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, go ahead and straighten out that right leg. Let the right hand reach back to grab the right foot. I had to think about left and right there for a second. And draw the heel in. So if this is super easy for you, can you get your hand right on the top of the foot, elbow facing up towards the ceiling. Close your eyes. And then gently release. Uh, replant the hands just underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes. Okay, this one's gonna need a deep breath. We're pushing all the way back up to plank. When you're ready, Woo. Nice, hold it, breathe. Ah, downward facing dog. Inhale. Cleansing exhale. Inhale, round it forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Find cobra, bhujangasana. And when you're ready to come down, we're looking for gecko on the left side of the body. So the right arm makes a pillow for the head. Left arm comes out into scarecrow. Left knee comes out to your side. Close your eyes. Softening into this hip opener. Our favorite Sufi poet, Rumi, said the message behind the words is the voice of the heart. The message behind the words is the voice of the heart. You see how we're connecting the heart chakra with the throat chakra. They have to work together. We want the heart to be able to speak its truth. Otherwise, I'm not really sure how we possibly can be in alignment with the universe if we can't access that within ourselves. Take a deep breath. Go ahead and straighten out that left leg when you're ready. Left hand is reaching behind you to grab onto that foot and draw it in. Gently release that leg. Replant the hands under the shoulders. Tuck the toes. You can either push back up to plank or head to table first. I leave that completely up to you and I have no idea which one you're choosing. Downward facing dog when you're ready. Perfect. We're going to lift the heels, bend the knees. This is crouching dog. How low can you get here? And then take your gaze forward to your hands. That's where the feet are heading, back to forward fold. So you can either step one foot forward and then the other, or you can make the jump. Ah, soften into your fold. Inhale, monkey. 
Exhale back down. Bend into the knees. Arms are sweeping forward and up into the chair. Up to the Look down again. Make sure you can see the tips of your toes. Now, since we are symbolically working on balance here, let's bring the hands to the heart. Shift the weight into the left foot. And just lift that right heel. Option A. Option B. Lift the right foot off the ground. Deepen the breath. Step that right foot all the way back into high lunge, reaching the arms up. So your variation on high lunge would be to set the knee down. Perfect. Bring the hands back in. We're opening this up, warrior B. So I need to pivot on that back foot. Woo. Got caught up in the carpet here. Keep that left knee pointing in the direction of the toes. Sink it down. Open the arms wide. Ah, breathe. I want you to make sure you are not here. We want to pull those shoulders over the hips. Reverse warrior, left arm up, right arm down. Come back to warrior B. Straighten out that front leg. Reach out of that right hip as far as you can go. And then let the left hand come down wherever it ends up. Right arm up, triangle, trikonasana. Breathe. We really need to focus on the breath, especially since I shut my window and it's getting really hot in here. So in triangle, well, we could have our fingertips to the earth if we have the balance for it, right? Hand could be on the shin. What's most important is that this top shoulder is in alignment with the hips. So if you're here, we need to come back up a little higher. Hand is never on the knee. It could be on the thigh. Yeah? Breathe. Good job, warrior B. Virabhadrasana, cartwheel the hands to the earth. Step back to plank. Take your vinyasa. When you get to dog, stay right there. Three deep breaths. Perfect. Find your crouching dog. Lift the heels. Bend into the thighs. And then however you so choose to get to forward fold. Inhale, monkey. Exhale it down. Inhale, chair. Woo. Nice. Breathe. Make sure you can see your toes. Take the hands to the heart. Shift the weight into the right foot. Lift the left heel. That's option A. Option B, lift the left foot. We're stepping back, high lunge. Finding that breath. When you're ready, bring the hands to the heart. Open this up into warrior B. I need you to look down since I can't see you. Make sure that right knee is aiming right over the toes. If the knee is tipping in, reach down and move it back out. Shoulders are over the hips. Reverse warrior, right arm up. Come back to warrior B. Straighten out the front leg. Reach out of that left hip. Slowly make your way to triangle. Uh, really stretch here. This is a great pose for sciatic issues. And then come back up to warrior B. Cartwheel the hands to the earth. Step back to plank. Take your vinyasa while I fix ganache. 
I did set my intention, he wouldn't fall off the wall. <laughs> We're not in alignment, apparently. Michi and Dodge. Outside. And then come on down to child's pose. <sighs> Letting the hips settle back. Heart soften. With your eyes closed, I want you to tap into the voice of the heart. You have to find that inner truth. What's going on that you really need the universe to swoop in and help you with? I know we're all stressed. Tensions are probably mounting. That's all coming from the root chakra, fear, because our security has been removed and we just don't know what's coming. But if you were in my last class or you watched it on YouTube, we were talking about Ganesh, who's right behind me, right? His vehicle is the mouse. And one of the reasons it's the mouse is because mice can see clearly in the dark. And so they guide Ganesh from darkness into light. That's where we're headed. Take a deep breath in. Go ahead and come back up into table. Whoops. Good one to go there. Cross one ankle over the other. And go ahead and sit back. Ah, stretching the legs out in front of you. So coming to staff pose, Dandasana. Hands are right down by the hips. Both feet are flexed. Sit up nice and tall, close your eyes. If it's hard for you to be at 90 degrees with the hips, you might re-grab that blanket you pulled off the bed and go ahead and just sit up on the edge of it. Ah, deep inhale, hold the breath. Really loud exhale. Nice job, take the arms forward and up. Lengthen out of the low back and then release into your fold if you need to bend the knees, go ahead. So each inhale, see if you can lengthen the crown of the head towards the tops of the feet. Each exhale, sinking just a little deeper. And then go ahead and walk your hands back up the legs. Ah, nice. Take the hands behind you. Let's go ahead and bend the legs. The outer right ankle is coming to rest on top of the left thigh. Right? So this is our seated pigeon pose. And this might be good enough right here. You might already be feeling this in the right hip, right glute. If you're not feeling this yet, scrunch in until you do. Keep that right foot flexed. The right knee keeps pushing away from you. And close your eyes. Remember what this feels like, a little cellular memory. We're gonna do the same pose with the leg in dog. We're gonna have a lot of fun. If you haven't been in one of my classes before, Perhaps I should warn you, my definition of fun might be a little off. Anyway, from here, let's go ahead and ah, keep that right leg on top and stretch out the left leg. This folds gonna be a little tougher. Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, come on down. Nice. Walk the hands back up. Ah, perfect. Take that right foot, bring it inside the left knee, hands behind you, fingers facing in. I'm gonna tip my weight back into my arms and I'm gonna point through the left ankle. So this is option A. This is a supported reverse plank. So just lift up the hip, see if you can get the sole of the left foot towards the ground. It might not go there. And if this is just too easy for you, come back down. Send out both legs and lift up. Breathe. 
and slowly release. Nice. Go ahead and replant the feet so we can get the outer left ankle up on top of the right thigh. And then scrunch it in until you feel that stretch. Left foot stays flexed. Knees pushing away from you. Ah, your time to relax. Close your eyes. This is the new Shavasana. And when you're ready, ah, go ahead, straighten out the right leg. Keep that left leg where it is. Inhale the arms. Exhale into your fold. Stay right there while I find my calming music again. Make sure you're still breathing. I guess that's my challenge. Teaching a class like this, I can't see you. I can't make sure you're still breathing. I can't check for grimaces. Go ahead and come back up. Set that left foot just inside the knee. Hands behind you, fingers facing in, point through the right foot. So either a supported reverse plank or if you want to stretch out the left leg and come up that way, that's totally fine. When you're ready. And then when you get to an exhale, come on back down. Perfect. Let's come all the way back onto the mat. I'm going to turn this way because I think you can see this side of my mat better. And hug the knees into the heart. We're going to straighten out that left leg. Keep the right knee tucked in. And then open the arms. Hopefully you have room for this straight out from the shoulders. If you don't have room for that, scarecrow. Because then the shoulders are in the same alignment, right? We're going to take the right knee across the body to the left in a supine twist. Keep that right shoulder down. If it comes up, I need you to back out of the twist. You might grab that blanket again or a pillow from the couch and shove it underneath that right knee. If you want to, you can turn your head to look over the right shoulder. Good job. Come back to center. Stretch that right leg up to the ceiling. I'm all about working a little bit, taking a sweet break. Working a little bit, taking a sweet break. So please don't get in the mindset we're heading to Shavasana just yet. We have some things to do. But we need some of that sweetness in life. The Sanskrit word is rasa. Ah, big inhale here. Exhale, slowly lower that right leg all the way down. And then draw the left knee in. Give it a hug. When you're ready, open the arms straight out from the shoulders or again, scarecrow if you're running out of room. Take that supine twist to the right. Keep that left shoulder down and maybe the head turns to look over the left shoulder. That's up to you. When you're ready, come back to center. Stretch that left leg up to the ceiling. Big inhale. Exhale, slowly lower that leg back down. And when that leg touches, take a moment to stretch both arms overhead. Roll off to whichever side you want to in a fetal position. Get a good breath and push your way back up into table.
Inhale, cow, when you're ready. Exhale, cat. Come back to table, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Okay, remember I said we were gonna have some fun and that my definition of fun might be a little warped. So I want you to shift the weight into the left foot, outer right ankle on top of the left thigh. That right leg is in pigeon. So I have my right foot flexed, I'm actively pushing my right thigh away from me. Keep pushing the hips up. Ooh, breathe. If you're new to yoga or vinyasa, let's make this option A. Just stay right here, set that foot down when you need to. If you want to, actively push the right foot into that left thigh so it doesn't move as you come forward into plank. Hold it here, breathe. Good job. Take it back to dog. Woo, set that right foot down, walk it out a little bit. Come forward into plank. Chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Downward facing dog. Okay, shift the weight into the right foot. Outer left ankle up on that right thigh. The foot's flexed, the knee's pushing away. This is option A. Option B is plank. Take it back to dog. Release the left foot. We're coming down into embryo, which is like child's pose, but the knees stay together. The arms reach back. You can kind of wiggle from side to side if you want. And then reach the arms forward. Walk the hands all the way to the right and do a twisted child's pose. You can keep the knees together or separate them if you want to. And then walk the hands through center, all the way to the other side. <sighs> Refocusing on the breath. I'm reopening my window. My office has turned into a hot yoga studio. Go ahead. Bring the arms back to center. Ah, so you're in child's pose. Take a deep inhale and let it go. I think we should try something else that just sounds like a whole lot of fun. So come on up into table. Tuck the toes, downward facing dog. I want you to take that right leg back into pigeon against that left thigh. Come forward into plank. And now if you want to, you can drop that left knee first or you can come straight down. We're coming down to rest upon that right leg that's trapped in pigeon. You can release the arms and close your eyes. Remember, if you get here and you hate this, you should make a change. It's all fine. Ah, deep in the breath. I think one of the things that's throwing us out of balance is we've been forced into change. So if we just dabble in a little bit of it during our yoga practice, we get a little bit more comfortable with where that might lead us. As long as it's not leading us into pain, right? Breathe. Let's take the easy way out of this pose, shall we? I'm just gonna lift my left leg a little so I can straighten out that right leg. Woo. Plant the hands under the shoulders, bring the shoulders up toward the ears, roll them back and down as they guide you up into cobra. Remember, cobra can be wherever your back needs it to be, but I really do need you to soften the shoulders down, 
pull the ears back a little bit. Take a huge inhale, cleansing exhale, and just melt the heart back down. We're rising up in the table. Tuck the toes, take it back to dawn. This time it's the left foot that's coming up on the right thigh for our pigeon. Bring the hips forward, come into plank, and again, if you need or want to set that back leg down first, that's totally fine. Otherwise, come down woo, as one unit. Relax the arms, close your eyes. Feel the gentle weight of the right leg pushing down on the left ankle. What's the intention you put out there? Om Ritam Namah. I feel like it's calming down. The weight of the body relaxing. Can you add a soft smile to your face? Remember, Patanjali tells us that everything is temporary. And we can't know lightness without darkness and vice versa. So we know we are headed towards a light. When you're ready, go ahead and stretch out that leg, taking a deep breath in and letting go. And then go ahead and gently roll over onto your back, setting up your space for Shavasana. If you're new to yoga, Shavasana is corpse pose, laying on the back with the arms and legs comfortably spaced, allowing the mind to be free. Enjoy and relax and wait there for me to come back and get you.
stay down on the ground. There's no reason for us to get back up. You're in a happy place. Let's linger there. Big stretch all the way from the fingertips through the ankles to the toes. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, draw one knee slowly into the heart and then the other. Gently rock the hips from side to side. And then roll to whichever side you have more room in a fetal position. Add that soft smile to your face. And then very gently push your way back up, allowing the head to be the last part of the body to lift. Deep breath in, loud exhale. Inhale, take the arms all the way up, bring the palms together, and then exhale them back home to your heart. The light in me bows to the light in you. And when I'm in that place in me, and you're in that place in you, then we become one. Namaste.